Gospel of April the 8th, 2017, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what Jesus had done began to believe in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees convened the Sanhedrin and said, What are we going to do? This man is performing many signs. If we leave him alone, all will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our land and our nation. But one of them, Cephas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing, nor do you consider that it is better for you that one man should, be that, should die instead of the people so that the whole nation may not perish. He did not say this on his own, but since he was high priest for that year, he prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation, and not only for the nation, but also to gather into one the dispersed children of God. So from that day on they planned to kill him. So Jesus no longer walked about in public among the Jews, but he left for the region near the desert to a town called Ephraim, where and there he remained with his disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before Passover to purify themselves. They looked for Jesus and said to one another, as they were in the temple area, What do you think? Will he not come to the feast? Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This beautiful gospel reminds me of two parables. One of them, and which gives the title to the to the homily, is This is the heir. Let us kill him and let us keep the inheritance, the land. It is incredible how twisted their own reasoning becomes. The witnesses of the rising of Lazarus, most of them believed in Jesus. And how could they not, unless they were ill or sick? But some of them were indeed ill and sick, and went to report to the Pharisees that Jesus had arisen at four day death, from, as if not having died at all. And then they have this twisted mind of people in the Sanhedrin saying, if we leave him alone doing all these miracles, all will believe in him and the Romans will take away our land and our nation. What does one thing have to do anything with the other? They had already confiscated, the Romans had already confiscated their land. They were paying heavy taxes, and they were oppressed by the Romans and governed by the Romans. What these people were talking about, what they feared really, was that upon the nation converting to Jesus, they would be left without power. That was the true fear of the Sanhedrin, of the most of the people of the Sanhedrin, not all of them though. And like I said, it reminds me of two, of two parables. The first one is the killer bind your workers. Both of them are parables that the Lord told them to the Jews. The first one said, an owner, a landowner, cultivated a vineyard, had it ready to production, to production for production, and then rented it out to some workers. But the workers would never give the owner his part of the fruit, even though the owner would send his slaves, one after the other, to collect his share of the fruits. But they would not give him that. Finally, the owner thought that if he sent his own son, they would respect the son and give the do part, but rather than thinking rightly and repenting for trying to steal from the one who had rented the property to them, 
they thought this is the heir. This is the heir. Let us kill him. So that no one. And that is so weak. It clearly is the act of the devil. Who perhaps thought that the Son of God becoming incarnated became weak and he could kill him and just dispose of him. But all the people that went along with the devils. performed a wicked deed, but nevertheless they complied with what God had in mind. For Jesus was to die in order to gather all the dispersed children of God. And then there is also another parable, the one about the rich man who dined splendidly every day. He ate very well, he dressed incredibly well, he was very rich, and there was this poor man covered with sores laying exactly at the front of his house, who just dreamed about having his field of the scraps that fell from the table of the rich man. And when they both died, the poor guy went into the bosom, into the bosom of, of Abraham, and he was consoled. But the rich man went into the fire pit, into Hades. And he was being tormented. And there is a dialogue which ends like this. Send Lazarus to, my, to the house of my father to, to warn my five brothers lest they come to this wicked place of punishment. And Abraham answers, they have Moses and the prophets. If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not convert even if a dead man rises. Of the three deaths that were risen by the Lord Jesus, only one name is known. First is the daughter of Jairus. Second is the son of the widow in Naim. And third is Lazarus. This is exactly the gospel that we have read. And what was the conversion of the Jews? On that day they decided to kill the Lord. Lazarus was, wrote, was risen for the sake of some and also for the decision in the Sanhedrin to kill the heir, the heir. Where do we stand? Do we keep on pushing with our own interests, with our own lives, going further and further away from God? Or do we try our best to try to control ourselves and realize that God is good, that He really does, does good things to us. Let us pray, dear brothers, that we might believe in the Lord Jesus by His miracles, that we might, not ne that we might never reject Him because of our own interest. And let us have at least the chance to pray to God that He might grant us repentance to try and walk with the Lord this holy week with a repentant heart. Until we meet in heaven, God bless you all, brothers.